Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to create a program that allows us to ask the user random questions. And to get started here, we're going to first start off with a comment. And we're just going to comment, this is a random questions program. So remember to start with this is a random questions program. Alright, so from here we're going to import random. So we're going to import our random function. And now we're going to create functions. So we're going to start with DEF. So we're going to define our, func our function. And we're going to label this again and again. All right, so our function name is going to be again and again. Let's get our colon. And then we're going to print a statement. We're going to ask the user how many questions do they want to answer, right? So we're going to say how many questions would you like to answer, right? So after we ask the user this, we're going to get an input from the user, right? So we're looking for input. So we're going to have number of problems equals input All right so we're going to get that input from the user and we're going to store it in a variable called number of problems All right so next we're going to say number of problems equals int number of problems right so, so int number of problems. All right. So we're going to have our if statement. If number of problems is greater than three, we're going to print we're going to let the user know, hey, you can only have up to three problems. So if it's greater than three, um, you won't be able to continue in the program. So we're going to create a program that allows the program or for the user to answer three questions, up to three questions. So we're going to say, sorry, you can only answer up to three questions. Get a space there. And then we're going to have our, it's going to call our again and again. So we're going to call it. So this is like a loop, right? So if we, if the user puts in, let's say four, it's just going to loop back to again and again, and it's going to restart the program. And we're going to have another if statement. So we're going to say if number of problems, is less than or equal to zero we're just going to exit the program we're going to say thanks for playing and we're just going to exit the program so we're going to say thanks for playing and we're going to exit right so obviously if the user answers zero or anything below zero the user doesn't want to continue playing the game, right? So we're going to exit out of the program. Else, so our else statement is going to be for problems wanted. So we're going to have a problems wanted in range number. So remember to get our parentheses. Number of problems. And we're just going to have four random questions. So we're going to have questions one as a variable equals one. And we're going to set that equal to one. Question two, we're going to set it equal to two. Questions three equal to three. 
questions four equal to four. And I'll explain these in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna have variables, questions, or question one, two, three, and four. We're gonna actually just make it question. So we're gonna have questions one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna set those to variables or a number one, two, three, and four. All right, so from here, we're gonna start asking questions, right? So we're gonna have our question. So question equals, so question number, I'm sorry, equals random that rand int, so random integer between one to four, right? So we're gonna say question numbers equals random dot rand int. And we're gonna have another if statement, if else statement. So we're gonna say if question number is equal to one, we're gonna say question one answer equals input, get our parentheses, and we're going to ask the user a question. We're going to ask the user, what is the color of grass? All right, so something easy. What is the color of grass? All right, and so we're going to say if question one answer equals green. So we're going to say if question one answer equals green, which is the right answer, that's the answer we want, we're going to print. That's correct. All right, so we're going to tell the user that's correct. Else, so let's get our else statement. So else, we're going to say that's not correct. So something simple. That's not correct, All right? So we're going to just run this program right now just so you guys can see how it runs. So we're going to move this down so you can see it better. We're going to control S, save that. We're going to build, compile. All right, our program compiles. We're going to execute, right? So nothing happens. And nothing happens because we haven't called our, our function. So remember to always call the function, right? So let's call our function. So remember our function is called again and again. So again and again, right? And remember to put your parentheses, control S, save that. And you can uh, name your, your function anything you want. For this demonstration, I just named it again and again. So we're going to build, compile, it compiles, we're going to execute. All right. So it's, it's asking us how many questions would you like to answer? We're going to say we want to answer just one question, right? So now we get a, so name, question number is not defined. All right, so let's look at question number. So question number. So remember, we have question number here, but we have questions number down here. And something as simple as that would mess up the entire program. So always uh, go over your program. Uh, make sure you find those errors. Even though the, the program compiled, it still has some logic errors, right? Or syntax errors because we never had a uh, question number. So if question number, right? So let's make sure everything is correct. So question number, question number, question one answer, question one answer. So everything looks correct. Let's execute. So how many questions would you like to answer? We'll say one again. All right, so nothing happened, right? And nothing happened because we only have one question in our queue here. So. The random number probably didn't, uh, it probably was every number but one, right? So when we look for the random number, it's going to be a number between one and four, right? So 
let's put another question. So as you guys know, I like to just copy and paste. So I'm going to copy this question because I already have it uh, the way I want it. And we're just going to paste it and we're just going to change up the, the question, right? So we're going to say question number equals two. And we're going to, the second question we're going to ask is, uh, who was the first U.S. president? So let's put who was the first U.S. president? Right, so we're going to ask the user who was the first U.S. president. So we're going to give the user some options here. So the first option we're going to say is, let's say, George Washington with uh, let's say both first and last name or we're going to say question and remember this is going to be question two so we're going to change the variable so question two answer is equal to and we're going to say we're going to allow the user to pick George Right, and we're going to give them one more option. We're going to just put the last name or question to answer is equal to, and we're going to just put his uh, last name, Washington. All right, and we're going to say that's correct. So we're going to give the user several options to answer the question. So we're going to give them George Washington, George, or uh, Washington. Right, so remember to change our variable. So question two answer and question two answer. All right, so let's control S save that. So we're just going to have a random number, a random integer of between one or two. That way we at least get a question asked. All right, so we're going to build, compile. All right, it compiles. Let's execute. And when we execute, we're going to still do the one question. So it should ask us either question one or question two, right? So what is the color of grass? The color of grass is green. That's correct. The program ends because that's that's all we're doing. We're not we didn't have any loops in it, and we're just asking the user one question, and the program exits, right? So we're going to exit out, and now we're going to ask for two questions. All right. So let's execute. How many questions would you like to answer? We're going to say two. What is the color of grass? Green. What is the color of grass? Green. So, so the issue with ran int is it can pick the same question multiple times, right? So we give the user the option to answer as many questions as they want, but at the same time, the user, it's possible the user could answer the same question over and over and over again. Right, so we're going to give the user a little bit more options to answer questions. And something like this could be helpful for tests if you want to uh, ask yourself questions over and over again just so you can understand whatever you're trying to study or learn. So this, this can be helpful. So we're going to change the variable. So we're going to say question three, answer three, right? So question three, answer. So input, so the third question we're going to ask the user is, let's ask the user, uh, who is on the U.S. penny? Let's put that. Who is on the U.S. penny? All right? So we can put, let's put Abraham Lincoln, right? Abraham Lincoln. Let's put... And for him, we're going to put his, we're going to put Abe, or we're going to put Lincoln. All right. So who's on the U.S. penny? And remember to change it. So we change question number equals three. Question three, answer three. Question three, answer. Okay. So now we're going to have, since we have three questions, we're going to um, broaden our range from one to three. We're going to save that, and we're going to execute. Right, so let's execute. How many questions would you like to answer? Let's say we want to answer three questions. Who was the first U.S. president? 
Remember, we have multiple options. So we're going to put George. That's correct. Who is on the US penny? Let's say Abe. What is the color of grass? Let's say green, right? So we got everything correct. Right? So who is on the US penny? Abe. So we didn't do something correct because it didn't give us the answer that's correct, right? So there's something we need to fix. Who is on the US penny? Okay, so we didn't change all of our variable names so remember to change all your variable names so that's that's one you know issue with copy and pasting you, you have to remember to change every every variable name or there will be uh, logic errors in your program right so it still ran but there were some logic issues and it didn't uh, we didn't get the the response we wanted from our program it didn't uh, give us what we wanted. So we're going to add one more question, right? So we're going to control uh, V. We're going to paste that. And we're going to put question number four. So remember to change all of our variables. Question four, answer. Question four, answer. And for this last question, we're going to put what is the color of the sun? So just some simple questions. What is the color of the sun? Right, so we're gonna have uh, some. Let's put three answers just like we did the previous two. We're gonna say yellow, and remember to change the variable. So, question four, answer. We're gonna say, let's say we're gonna accept the answer of orange, or let's see, yellowish. Let's put yellow-ish orange, All right? So we're gonna have uh, four different or three different choices for the user. And remember to change our variable four, right? So we're gonna control save that, and we're gonna run this. So we have, so what's happening with our with our program? If we start from the top, so we have our function again and again. So everything that you see under again and again and before we, we we call our function is a part of the function right so all of this is under our function all right so so from the beginning from the top of our program we created our function so we defined it def right that was the keywords to create our function and this is our function name so we had a print statement so we're just asking the user how many questions they would like to answer and from that we get an input so we're getting an input from the user and we're um, converting this input into an integer right so we're getting this number it becomes a, a string and we're changing that string to an integer right so after that we get the we're asking our user well the program will say if the number is greater than three, we're going to give this response, right? So if the number is greater than three, so I'll show you guys that next. We're going to get, sorry, you can only answer up to three questions. So let's see that. Let's see that in action. So how many questions would you like to answer? Let's put, we want to answer 66 questions, right? Sorry, you can only answer up to three questions. And then it goes back so it's like a loop right it's like it's a never-ending loop that will never exit until you give me something between zero and three so if you give me something under zero zero or under remember our, our response to that is to exit the program so if i put uh, let's say i put negative three it's going to say thanks for playing and it exits the program All right so we're looking for something specifically between one and three so let's say we want to answer two questions what is the color of grass green and who is on the US penny Abe right so that's correct that's correct right so so after our if else statements right so remember if the number is greater than three it prints this statement and then it goes back into our program because we're calling it uh, with our again and again function. However, if the number is zero or below, it, it says thanks for playing and it exits. Else, so this is the next criteria, if it does meet what we want between one and three, 
it's going to go to our else statement. So problems and range. So remember, we asked the user how many questions they want to answer. So they can only answer between one and three problems. So we give them four different. So we have a, a question bank. You can you can look at this as a question bank. So we have a question bank of four questions. So depending on how many questions the user wants to answer in the range of one to three, we have a question bank of four, right? And then we're going to call our so so question number equals ran, random that ran int one through three. So it would never get to our fourth question. All right. So we have to give it the option to get to our fourth question. So we change it the range from one to four. All right. So at first we can only ask questions one to three. But now we have range one to four. So now we can ask the user all four questions and it will be a, a random number, a random question, right, between one and four now. So let's run the program again. We're going to control S, save it, and we're going to run it again. And when we run it again, let's say we want to answer three questions. So the color of the sun, that's one of the questions that first pops up. So we know we have our all four questions are being asked now. So what is the color of grass? Green. And who is the first U.S. president? Uh, let's say, let's, let's answer it wrong so you can see, um, let's say Hamilton. All right. So nothing happens, right? So why nothing happens? So our third question, who was the first U.S. president? So let's go look at that code. So who was the first U.S. president? So our else statement should have responded to the user. That's not correct but it didn't do anything. It exited the program. So who was the first US president? Let's make sure everything is correct here. So question two, answer, question two, answer. So, it, so we're missing a print statement, right? So we're missing the word print. So it's always important to go over your code, right? So let me control C. So this is why you test your program so we were missing the word print so it never would have showed us that else statement so let's put print let's control s save and let's uh, run it again so how many questions would you like to answer let's put two what is the color of the sun let's put green that's not correct okay so we get the option now because we were missing the word print so something as little as a, a the word print will uh, have your program not respond the way you would want it to. So what is the color of grass? Let's say yellow. That's not what we're looking for. And our program is done, right? So in its current state, the program works how we want it to. We can ask the user up to three questions. And you can always change the number. Uh, let's say you want to change it to um, 10. So we can answer up to 10 problems. Control S, save that. So now if I type in 10, I'll be able to answer 10 questions. Just remember, there's only a four question word bank. So I, I'll definitely get the same question more than one time. Who is on a US penny? Ape. What is the color of the sun? Yellow. Color of grass? Green. Color of the sun? Yellow. Color of the sun? Yellow. First US president? Ape. First U.S. President, it's not Abe, it's George. George, what is the color of the sun? Yellow. Who is on the U.S. Penny? Abe. And who is on the U.S. Penny? Let's put Abraham. Right, that's not, that's not correct. All right, let's go look at that. So that's not correct on Abraham. So either I spelled it wrong or I didn't do something wrong. All uh, right. But uh, you see, it gives the user 10 questions. And like I said, there's only a four question uh, bank. So of course, we're going to get the same question multiple times. And it looked like we got the color of the sun uh, four to five times. So let's exit this. Uh, let's fix our program. So um, OK, so Abraham wasn't an option. Remember, we only gave the user Abraham Lincoln or Abe or Lincoln, not just Abraham. 
So this was a demonstration. Um, this demonstration included uh, our for statement here. We have a bunch of if else statements. We created functions. Uh, we have our random function here, uh, ran int, um, giving the user many uh, choices for questions. And you can always add as many questions as you would like. Just always remember to change the range of the questions. Um, so if we put five, our program would probably give us a blank question because there's no question five in our work in our uh, question bank, right? So as many questions as you as you are. As, as far as you want the range to be, you should have at least that many questions. So if I put five, I should have five questions. So all I would do is add another question. So question five equals five, right? So you can put as many questions as you want. And it just asks the user over and over again until the number of questions is answered based on how many uh, questions the user wants to answer. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed the program, please like and subscribe to see more.